Wanted to mention that a really big sign that you're a self-rejector is when you're not able to take compliments from other people. Hello, and welcome back to another solo episode of Habits and Hustle, where I'm sitting with my foil, Shawnee. We're, yeah, woohoo, welcome. <laughs> um, I wanted to really unpack uh, this notion and idea of self-rejection. Self-rejection is something I feel like I've been talking about it a little bit more recently on other podcasts and other interviews. I speak about it in my book, Bigger, Better, Bolder, and I really wanted to highlight this, this whole philosophy and this ideology because I think it's, it's something that we tend to do to ourselves a lot and it's, and it's really, it's really damaging. And so on this episode, I wanted to talk about what it is some signs that you might some signs that you might be self-rejecting yourself and ways to kind of overcome it uh, to get you to wherever you're trying to get. So the first thing is like what it is like what is self-rejection? Have you ever heard that expression self-rejection? I don't think I have. And so I don't think a lot of people have actually heard it. We hear the word rejection a lot like oh we've been rejected, rejection, mm -hmm. rejection. I talk about it a lot. But I guess it's because a lot of times when your rejection is when somewhat how someone else or what someone else does to you mm. versus what you do to yourself. And I think a lot of times what happens is that we self reject uh, more often than than uh, other people reject us. And in fact, a lot of times what we do is we self reject because we are scared that we're gonna be rejected. So then we reject ourselves first before it happens to us. Interesting, right? so you don't even give anything a go because you've already rejected yourself. Exactly, mm. and so we basically, again, we are our own worst enemies and we kind of don't even put ourselves in a place to win because we've already counted ourselves out by self rejecting. And so let me just tell you what the definition of self-rejection is. Self-rejection is the act of rejecting yourself basically before someone else has a chance of doing it to you or you basically minimize or water down um, who you are in a positive way to kind of appease the people around you mm. um, or, not get, or, or just not give yourself that opportunity to kind of flourish. Um, and so... A lot of signs of doing this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read off actually some of the signs that you might be self-rejecting, okay? So self-isolation is a sign of self-rejection. Um, regularly comparing yourself to others is a big one. Mm. When you like compare yourself and do the whole like compare game with others, te technically what you're doing is you're, you're, you're looking to see how you don't compare or match up to whoever that person is so therefore putting you yourself on a putting someone else on a pedestal putting yourself lower down on that on that pedestal um basically very difficult you, you take you not you're not able to take compliments it's very difficult um you're very critical of yourself you're very actually and critical of others as well so a lot of times when you're criticizing someone else it's because you see that 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 trait in you Another big one is excessive attention to clothes and appearance. Interesting. Right? Because you're trying to like hide whoever that, whoever you are. Um, you've got a lot of self-image issues, excessive shyness, passivity, and non-initiations in relationships. Oh, so this is obviously not me. So <laughs> no, you're not a big self-rejector. Um, neglecting priorities and key responsibilities, basically self-sabotaging. So, but how does that, I feel like a lot of that doesn't necessarily apply to self-rejection. I feel like that's so general, like a lot of those are very general. They are. Well, listen, these are signs that you are doing it because mm. a lot, I think a lot of times our self-rejection can be very much like self-sabotage. I see self-sabotaging mm. and self-rejecting to be very similar and you do these behaviors to yourself that you're not even subconsciously aware that you're doing mm. that causes a ripple effect, right? Because every action has a reaction. So if you're doing some of these things like self-isolating or being depressed or crit being crit critical of yourself or comparing yourself, you are, you're then putting yourself, pitting yourself at a place where you're, you're not really living your best. You're not really putting your most positive energy out there to the world. 
so interesting i could see it as such a clear example in the relationship world in the dating game like that's such a so apparent in that area where you would reject yourself before even approaching somebody because you're like oh they wouldn't like me and i like it's so clear also i guess in a career aspect as well you know not even asking for the promotion or not even asking to be considered for a role because you've already rejected yourself from that you're like there's no chance there's no way why would i even try it's actually really i mean it's super fascinating i can see some really clear examples of where that would apply in everyday life i wanted to talk i wanted to mention that a really big sign that you're a self-rejector is when you're not able to take compliments from other people yeah that's a really interesting one that's one because it makes you it makes, it makes you uncomfortable by the way i'm really bad at that really i think so yeah i am so i think that's something i have to over, i i'm working on overcoming Actually, that's true you I'm, do not like when i give you You always think i'm joking when i give you compliments i do and i you and do, i and i def- do and i deflect oh my god you oh, that is so true i've I actually deflect. never even like picked up on that in a very real sense but it's true when you point it out now i def- definitely do notice that i know let me tell you something i think a lot of the things that i talk about um surprise surprise or things <laughs> that are obviously like uh, relevant in my life that right. I've, I have overcome or, or attempting to overcome or a work in progress. Um, so I'm never someone to speak from this like white ivory tower. I'm someone who speaks from like a place where I'm like in it, through it, working on it and speak to the best in the world and for, and glean as much valuable information as possible. But yeah, I'm really bad at taking compliments. And if you are somebody who's bad at that also, you may want to look inward and figure out why that is. Are you self-rejecting? That's another one. Mm. So like, by the way, of all the stuff I just mentioned of all the things like the compare game, like comparing yourself to others or isolating or feeling depressed or, or, or watering yourself down to make someone else feel more comfortable, all of those things. You can be doing one or two of those things. It's not like you have to be doing all of it to be someone who's, you know, self, a self rejector. Right. Um, so these are just, these are just a lot of different signs. Again, it's very similar to self-sabotage and, um, a, the best part, the best way to overcome any of this is to a recognize that you're doing it, which is why I wanted to read some of the signs and after you recognize it, catch yourself in the moment so you start to stop doing it, right? Because mm. that's, the, that's the only way to overcome something is when you're like, oh, yeah, oh, my God, I recognize that I'm doing it. I just did it. I'm going to try better next time. I'm not going to do it again. And that's how you stop a bad habit uh, from continuing and you replace it with a better habit, the better habit of how not to self-reject and to maybe self accept would be when someone says to you, Hey, you look great today. Say thank you. As opposed to, Oh God, please stop it. Or, Oh, you know, thanks. Or like deflect it or something else. Right. Yeah. So just the way you respond is a really good way of stopping about that bad habit of self rejection. Um, and that's really what I want to do on this episode, on this episode and every episode is, like I said, mention something that maybe some that we all tend to do, how we can overcome it, give people these actionable things that can ha- help you um, better yourself, better your life, optimize yourself to be happier, to live more uh, authentically and to, you know, be bigger, better and bolder. I love that. I think it's important, by the way, that you're speaking from a place of working through all of this stuff and not coming from this ivory tower, because anyone who hasn't experienced this stuff and is just giving advice like what how, what do they know <laughs> you know what i mean no. how can they possibly speak from experience or from a place of having overcome something or work through something or acknowledge something if they haven't actually like been through it themselves it's a bit weird to get advice from someone who's so disconnected from no, an issue 100 and that's why a lot of times sometimes like fair like you got to be careful and discerning like what therapist you go oh, to God, i was right? just thinking in my right? mind because like Thera- uh, that's just crazy because, right because just because someone has a degree and, they, and, and they're now given carte blanche to give someone advice on whatever the issue is. I mean, a degree is not like living it, feeling it, experiencing it. And so I just feel like the sermon is so important. And then, you know, I think it's really easy when someone hasn't experienced someone to slough something off. Like, oh, yeah, just do this. Like, I would prefer to get advice from somebody who actually has like mm. gone through something and been through it. And then like you learn from experience better than I think you learn from that better than anything else. 
Yeah. Well, I was in a lot of therapy as a child, like a lot. I went to therapy to boarding school, went to many programs. And something I learned from a young age is that most people that are in therapy, therapists, are there because they've been through the ringer in life and they now came out the other side and would like to help people. Yeah. Not always, but it is. I was just sitting here before you even mentioned that thinking that's crazy because that's how the best therapists are the ones who have gone through all this stuff and are speaking from a place of experience as opposed to you know just like some ivory tower well i i I agree i also find that a lot of times people end up doing the thing that they actually have the most like there's a it because they had an issue with it before Mm. so like you know like for example like a lot of personal trainers a lot of people in the fitness business are in the fitness business because they had like some kind of like obsession with fitness themselves or some type of like reason why they were brought into that space. It wasn't just because. The health of a family member (laughs) may have declined and then they got motivated to get into it. They may have been fatter before and then they lost a bunch of weight or they like, you know, they are they're diabetic. They had to start getting healthy for themselves. Some of the best people on, on, on Instagram, this guy that I follow, I was actually uh, his name is Thomas, and I was on his YouTube. He's like, he's got, he's a massive following on YouTube, like millions of people, and he talks a lot about fasting, which I, I'm not a big fan of fasting, but he talks about fasting, health, health. He's very knowledgeable in the health sp- mm. space, and he gives like some of the best, like best information because he himself was like morbidly obese Mm. and then he lost all the weight so he uses his own experiences as kind of like how he got his whole journey was because he lived it breathed it did it and because of that like inherent like interest and desire to be better like he keeps on like upping the ante with his research and information i love that uh, and i always look for people like that so Getting back, to, we could talk about that stuff later. But we I can. Will, uh, we, can, we got lots of other solos to do. But yeah. I definitely want to say that today was about you know a really pointing out this idea of self rejection, and if you are someone who is experiencing that or does that, like let's stop it, right? Like let's try to get a little bit better by imp- in basically stopping it, stopping it in its tracks by changing that behavior as it's happening into self-acceptance. So let's go from self-rejection to self-acceptance. And thank you for this. uh, Thank you for listening. And join the Facebook group. (laughs) And and subscribe (laughs) and leave a comment of what you think. And buy the book. (laughs) Oh yeah, and buy my bigger, better, bolder book. (laughs) 